Hi, I'm Natalie McClutchy and welcome to another episode of McClutchy Maths. You can contact me as always at McClutchyMaths at yahoo.com. Today our focus is on reducing balanced loans, which is part of the Year 12 General Maths Syllabus for Queensland as well as the Essential Maths Syllabus. Our learning goal today is going to be to focus on being able to write a recurrence relation for a reducing balance loan as well as to fill out an amortisation schedule. And we're going to be using the worked examples today from exercises 8.1 and 8.2 of the Jacaranda textbooks. Let's get started. Firstly, you may have never heard of the term, what is a reducing balance loan? Well, most people know it simply as a mortgage. We have two types of mortgages, for a home that you live in and for an investment property, which is one you buy and rent out to somebody else. There are two types of interest rates that can be charged on a mortgage. The first one is a variable rate. Now, that's exactly what it sounds like. It changes. Every month, the Reserve Bank of Australia has its board get together and they look at things like the Australian economy, unemployment, inflation, how the economy is going overseas. And they make decisions about what to do to stimulate our economy. And that might mean increasing interest rates or reducing interest rates. In fact, for the last five or so years, for as long as I can remember, they've just been reducing them every month. Now, once they make that decision, then they um, inform the community and then the banks make decisions about how much of that they're going to translate into somebody's mortgage. Now, if you have a mortgage at a variable rate, that means that every month that there's a possibility that the rate could go up, which means you'd be paying more interest or the rate could go down, which would be paying less interest. We also have fixed interest rates and a fixed interest rate means that you are locking in an agreed rate for a certain period of time. So for example, I have an investment property and I have it on a fixed rate and that's for three years. That means over that life of three years, we've agreed to a rate of about 4.15% and it's not going to change in that three years. Unfortunately, because now interest rates are so much lower and I'm wishing and kicking myself that I had gone variable, but that's another story. There are two types of loans that you can take out. One is called a principal and interest loan, which means that with every repayment, you are paying part of the principal and some interest. And there are other loans, which are interest-only loans. And that means that you are paying off the same amount of interest every single month and the loan's balance doesn't reduce. So let's dig into that a little bit more. Interest is usually charged monthly. You can make repayments weekly, fortnightly, monthly, whatever fits with your budget. Obviously, if you make more frequent payments, then you are paying off your interest quicker. So that means you are paying less interest in the long term. So it does make sense to make your payments much more frequently. Now, with a principal and interest loan, what that means is that every month, the amount that you owe the bank is going to decrease by the amount of principal that you pay off. So every repayment is made up of a component of principal and a component of interest. Now, let's say we took out half a million dollars to buy a home. It wouldn't be fair on a 40-year mortgage to be charging us interest on the half a million dollars for the entire 40 years and then to have to pay back um, the whole $500,000 at the end of 40 years. That would be pretty full on. So what we do is we pay off bits and pieces as we go. And that balance that we owe reduces every single time we make a repayment. That means that we load, owe the bank less every time we have to make a repayment, which is great news. With an interest only loan, for example, usually these are on investment properties, it means that the amount we owe stays the same for the whole life of the loan. So for example, with my investment property that I've locked in for three years, it means that I'm going to be paying the same amount of interest every single month. So that's nice for me because it means I can budget. I, I know what my rent is. I know what my other expenses are. It means it's a bit of a no brainer for me. Um, but the only problem with that is, is that at the end of the loan in 40 years time, I will owe the bank the value of that whole investment property. The idea is, is though, for people that are investment property owners, and you'd be thinking to yourself, why on earth would you do that? Well, you only get a tax deduction on the interest part of the loan, and that's why investment property holders typically don't pay off the principal. The idea is they hold it for a while, wait for the value of the house to go up, and then sell it. Okay, the process of calculating the interest as we go, as we reduce the balance of that loan, is called amortization. It's a big word. It's a little bit like depreciation. Okay, we're going to show you how that works. Firstly, let's talk about the recurrence relation for a reducing balance loan. And this is going to be on your QCAA formula sheet. Yay, one less thing to memorize. Let's unpack what the different terms mean. Well, first of all, you don't see the term 
a zero in the recurrence relation. But it's expected that after you've written the recurrence relation that you would put a comma and then write a zero equals and then whatever the value of the principal is. And I'll show you how to do that in the worked example. But a zero basically means what is the amount that is owed at time zero? That's our principal, our starting amount. R is going to be equal to one plus the interest rate as a decimal. Now, you would have been used to in the compound interest formula, if you remember, in brackets, we had one plus the interest rate. Well, here in our recurrence relation, we've now got that all set up for us. One plus I is equal to the rate R. And we need to remember to always convert that to a decimal first. AN is our balance after we've made N payments. So with this particular recurrence relation, let's say I was looking at what is um, the value at the end of year three, that would be three is equal to n plus one. So I've got to take the balance at the end of year two, I've got to multiply it by the interest that I've got been charged on and then take a repayment off. And R, capital R, is that monthly repayment. Now, I know this looks a little bit, but when we unpack it with some numbers, it'll make a little bit more sense. So here's a worked example. Jeffrey borrows $3,500 at a rate of 6.5% compounded monthly. The monthly instalments are $711.42. Write a recurrence relation to describe the situation. Now, there's our recurrence relation sitting on the screen from the QCAA, so I'm going to write that down first. The second thing I'm going to write down is my different variables that I'm going to be substituting in. So I know A0 is $3,500. That's my principal. I know my rate is going to be equal to one plus, now it's compounded monthly, so I've got to convert that annual rate into a monthly rate. So I'm going to divide that by 12 and I end up with 1.00542. I know that R, my monthly repayment or monthly installment, we use different words to describe it, is $711.42. So now that I've got these three different variables, I can substitute that into my recurrence relation. So I simply write a n plus 1 is equal to 1.00542 a n. I don't have to put any values in a n plus 1 or a n because I'm just writing the recurrence relation. They will stay as variables. Take away 711.42. Notice I've put the comma afterwards and I've stated what the principle is. a0 equals $3,500. That's expected that you would add that to the end of the recurrence relation for full marks. Now we're going to do this with some numbers. Now, we want to know, same example, how many monthly repayments is that going to take us to pay off this loan? Now, you could set this up in a table. That would be a great way of doing it. We're going to look at that a little bit later in the video. There's a quick way to do it on your Casio calculator. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Hopefully you can see it nice and close up. Okay, so first of all, on your calculator, you're going to type in the principal, $3,500, and you're going to press the equals or the execute button, and that pops that to the bottom of your screen. Now, what I'm going to do is multiply that by 1.00, I'll just quickly check my interest rate over here, 542, because I can't remember everything, and then I'm going to subtract 711.42. So notice that sits up on the top of the screen. Now here's where I'm going to do some counting. I'm going to press equals. That tells me after one monthly payment. I've made one monthly payment. I've now got 2,800 owing. If I press equals again, that's my second monthly payment. $2,111 is owing. If I press equals again, that's my third one. 1,411 is owing. If I press equals again, my fourth monthly payment, $707 is owing. Press equals again, I get down to 0 0.01. So basically, after five monthly repayments, one cent is owing. Now, I wouldn't go into a six, six monthly repayment and then pay back one cent plus the interest on one cent. That would be silly. So I would just add that one cent back to the fifth repayment. So the fifth repayment or the very last repayment that you would make on a loan like this would be just a little bit extra to cover the, the little bit extra because you don't want to be paying interest on small, silly amounts. So that's going to take us five monthly repayments to pay off that loan. I suggest you pause the video, have a go with your calculator and see if you can work that out as well. Let's look at a different worked example now. We're going to take Jeffrey's 
money and we're going to do this in a table. So I've got on the right hand side of the screen all of those variables that we worked out as well as our recurrence relation so we don't need to keep referring back to previous slides and we want to fill out this table. We know that his monthly instalments are $711.42 so we can put those into the first column because the payment for year one, two, three, four and five it's going to be the same payment every time. Now I want to calculate the interest so this is basically, we're now doing this in a table, what we just did on our calculator very quickly. So to get to my first interest repayment, I take the amount that is owed, which is, let's see, the amount I'm owed is $3,500. And I need to multiply that by my interest rate. So the interest I'm going to be paying is $18.97. Okay, so now I want to work out how much of my monthly payment of that $711 that I've got to pay back, how much of that is going to be actually reducing the principal? Well, if I take the interest component out of that, that means I'm going to be paying back $692. So now the loan, I'm basically adding the interest, taking off the repayment. My actual balance of my loan now is $2,807. And we repeat that. I'm going to bring that balance back over to the beginning and I'm going to multiply that new balance by the interest rate. And then I'm going to fill the rest of the table out. Now, if we have a look at this table, so there's some interesting things happening here. Look, look, look at the interest column. You'll notice that as the months go by, the amount of interest that's being paid is reducing. We would expect that because the balance owing is less every month. So we would expect that to go down. So this is why it's important to look at your work after you've done the table. If you don't see a pattern there of it decreasing, there's a problem. Okay, look at the principal. You'll notice that the amount that we're reducing the principal um, by is increasing as each month goes on. That's because as the balance drops, that monthly payment stays the same. So we're taking the same amount off every month. But because this amount here is getting lower and lower and lower, less interest is being charged. So more principal is being paid off. This is why it's great when you start a home loan to try and pay off as much as you can at the beginning, because that means you're paying more principal off at the beginning. And as we can see, the balance of the loan is reducing as time goes on as well till we owe just two cents. So we would add that two cents to the last payment of $711 and pay off um, $711.44. That would make more sense to just finish it in five months. So that's how we amortize using a table. We're going to do this now with a different example. Mimi borrows $1,500 at 9% to buy a computer. The loan is paid back in equal monthly instalments of $382.06. And here is an incomplete amortization table. We're going to be asked some questions using the same information throughout. So our first question is to state the interest rate per payment period. Well, we know it's 9% per annum. We need to divide that by 12 because they're monthly instalments. So that means it's going to be 0.075% per month. And we're going to write that as a statement because this is a question in an exam. We need to make sure we write a statement. So that's the first question answered. Let's look at 2B. The next question is how much of the second payment is going to be made up of interest? Okay, so let's find that second payment first. There it is there, payment number two. The next thing I want to be doing is looking at this balance of the loan. That's the number I'm going to use to calculate the second payment. So I'm going to calculate 0 0.0075, that's the interest rate we worked out in 2A. I'm going to multiply that by the balance of the loan, and that's going to give me $8.47. So there is my interest component sitting in the table right there. That's how much of that second payment is made up of interest. Question C wants to know what's the balance of the loan after two payments? Well, we can find the second payment. We know we've made, we had a balance of $11,029.25 and we're going to be taking off $373.59. So our balance is going to be $755.66 and we can pop that into the third column. 2D wants to know what's the principal reduction after three payments. So our principal reduction is going to be $382.06 because the payment doesn't change. And we're going to take away that um, interest component, which has been given to us in that column for interest, $5.67. And that means we're actually reducing the principal of that particular payment by $376.39. And we're going to pop that answer into the column principal reduction. So we've now filled out the amortization table. Excellent. 
Question E wants to know what's the total interest that we paid on the loan? That's over that whole period of time. Well, we have to add all of the different interest from each repayment. So our total interest is going to be the sum of all of those numbers, which means we're going to be paying back $28.23 in total across the whole loan. That's actually not a whole lot, really. But mind you, she got it paid back in four months, so not bad. Okay, lastly, what should be her final payment to ensure she's got a zero balance at the end of the loan? Now, you'll notice at the end of the fourth payment, she owes five cents. Now, it wouldn't make sense to just keep that loan ticking over for another month and earning more interest and more interest forever and ever. So she is going to add these two numbers together and her final repayment will be just that little bit higher. $382.06 plus that five cents that's owing is equal to $382.11. So she's just going to have that last payment will be that little bit bigger. Well, I hope you've learned a lot today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.